So I wanna tell you a little story, and I'm sure that you can relate, especially if you're a real estate agent. When my daughter graduated from high school, I remember going on a listing appointment and literally seeing the pictures of the kids on the walls and I started crying on several occasions at these people's homes on a listing appointment. And the reason being was because I worked so much during my kids' high school that I felt an enormous amount of guilt. What happened was, one of my daughters was born, she got really, really sick and I used to be a teacher prior to getting into real estate. I taught third grade for six years, I love teaching. It's one of my passions is teaching and helping people. But I had to leave teaching because my daughter Kaylee got sick. She actually contracted spinal meningitis and then she had lost one of her kidneys and she had multiple strokes. And so while we were in the hospital, they told me multiple times that she was probably not gonna make it. Well, luckily she ended up making it, but they told me that I should anticipate her to have, you know, some disabilities. I thought there was a possibility that she could be blind, a possibility she could be deaf. And so I decided to leave my full-time teaching job to be a stay-at-home mom and to be able to take care of Kaylee. And I remember getting my real estate license thinking that, hey, I can just sell a couple homes a year and make what I was making as, as a teacher. Well, really quickly thereafter, I found out that my husband at the time was having an affair. And so I came home one day to drained bank accounts and we had just bought in a brand new house. And so I had the mortgage payment and two young girls under the age of five. Kaylee was, uh, Jayla was around four and a half, Kaylee was around two. And next thing you know, I have uh, this woman picking up my daughters on Thanksgiving, driving my car. I just remember feeling like the lowest of lows. Like I was raised that you don't get divorced, right? The only reason you get divorced is if you have you know an affair and so I had the permission let's just say to, to get divorced but it wasn't something that I was proud of I felt ashamed I felt embarrassed that I let it happen again because he had, he had already cheated on me one other time that I knew of and then after the divorce I found that it happened so many more times and I just was so worried about my kids I was worried about keeping them in their home and and being able to provide for them and so I got into real estate my reasoning for leaving the teaching job was to be able to stay at home with my daughters and be a stay-at-home mom and that completely crumbled because I had to keep them safe and secure and sound in their house. So that year I sold 69 homes, my first year in real estate. And the reason was is because I had to, right? I had no other choice but to do it because I had to keep the girls safe. I don't talk about this much, but it was really important for me to keep my daughters in their home, to keep them safe, to keep them secure. Because when I was younger, I left home at 13. I haven't lived at home since I was 13 because there was some physical abuse happening in the home. And so I started running away when I was 13 and I found myself living in cars and living in RVs and living in abandoned apartment complexes. And I did that for over a year. I was on the run for over a year. And finally I ended up getting in trouble. I broke the law. I ended up stealing from my, don't judge me, but from my eighth grade class and PE room. They were, the girls were at, at PE and I stole their clothes and I stole their lunch money. And so that got me thrown into juvenile hall. And I spent three months in juvenile hall. And then from there, they sent me to a group home. It was called Group Home Hidden Hills for Girls. There was nothing hidden about it because I got dropped off in this big, huge green bus labeled Hidden Hills group home, which caused everyone in ninth grade to pretty much shame me and ignore me and not want to be my friend because I was the screw up kid, along with my other fosters, my other group home sisters. And from there, I spent a year in that group home. Then I got sent to a foster home. So I spent the remaining years of high school in a foster home. I tell you this because it was really important for me to keep my kids in their home. I dove into real estate, what became wildly successful in real estate. I pretty much was in the top 1% of realtors nationwide almost every year that I was in business, except for one. And that led me to basically have no life. I remember working most weekends and working most nights. And I remember, you know, being on vacation and my kids like yelling at me to get off my phone or getting up at three in the morning to go downstairs and work in the lobby at the hotel so that my family wouldn't know. And then people ask me like, are you here with anybody? Cause you're working the whole time. And then when I wasn't downstairs in the lobby working, I'd be on the phone. And so my kids would be like, mom, you're not listening to me. Mom, get off your phone. And I just felt so tremendously guilty when my daughter graduated because I let the business consume me. They were nice enough to tell me, mom, you keep us great work ethic and don't feel like that. And you always were there when you needed us, but I felt bad about it. Do you ever feel that way? Like, like you're just, you're on a date with your husband and you're not really there because you're, the phone is ringing 500 times. You're getting text messages, you're getting emails and there's just so much happening in real estate that you can't really be present with your family. I felt that way too until I learned the systems and the strategy. So I want you to know that anybody can achieve those kinds of results. Anybody can, right? Anybody can achieve selling a lot of real estate, but it's difficult to sell a lot of real estate and do it in a way that you aren't just absolutely just 
consumed with it. So I figured out a way to actually make it not be as hard. I want to share those those strategies with you on this channel, and I'll tell you how I how I learned them. I remember when the market was starting to change. I kind of started to predict that it would change, and so I started traveling around the world and picking up asset management companies and banks. And so I don't know if you remember when the foreclosure market crashed back in 2008. Well, I had picked up 13 different asset management companies and 13 different banks that I worked for. Um, I worked for Wachovia and HUD and Green River Capital, and we had the Freddie Mac account. And you know, my best year, we sold 169 homes. And that was not any other realtor, just me. I was the only real estate agent, and I had a transaction coordinator, and I had an assistant. It was crazy. We were doing really, really well. Well, then, remember I said that there was one year I didn't do as well? The market crashed. And all of a sudden, we went from selling 150, 160, 169 homes to selling 12. Mind you, I had two little girls at home. I was the main provider, and I had you know two team members, and I was worried about taking care of them. And so the market changed, and all of a sudden, all the foreclosures went away, and we went from selling all these foreclosures to selling 12, and the asset management companies went away, and the banks quit giving us foreclosures. So I went on a listing appointment. It was a regular listing appointment, and I didn't get the listing. And so I called them to ask them for some constructive feedback. And they said, Krista, we liked you, but we hired the other person because the last guy that we interviewed called you the foreclosure queen. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I am the foreclosure queen. Nobody knew who I was in, in real estate. I hadn't done any marketing. I wasn't doing anything online digitally. I was just selling foreclosures and they were selling faster than we could even get them. And so I had to completely change how I was doing business. And so what I started doing was I started looking at how the Fortune 500 companies were. How were they attracting clients? What were they doing? And I started studying digital marketing and studying social media strategies and social media experts. And I figured out that, oh my gosh, they use content marketing, right? So I realized that that's what I needed to do in real estate. So instead of me having to chase down people, I needed to become what I call a community market leader. I needed to become the mayor of my town. I needed people to, anytime they thought about real estate or they thought about the community, I wanted to make sure that they thought about me. Now, this is the case with any type of profession, whether you're in real estate or you're a mortgage officer or a financial advisor or a divorce attorney or expert, any type of business can do this. And I started creating video content about my community. I talked about things that were up and coming and I did market updates and uh, national market updates and I talked about things to do in the area and what was what was prolific about real estate and you know I talked about my day and I just became a reporter sometimes about things I would learn or, and before you knew it I was selling back over 100 homes a year and they were not short sales or they weren't foreclosures they were normal types of homes so what does this tell you this tells you that even you you can do it right like I went from nobody knowing who I was to start creating video content and becoming a master digital marketer and engaging people. I call it engagement marketing because you want to engage your community, getting you know people to know you, to like you, to trust you, offering value, helping people, solving their problems, giving them what their, their needs are and their likes are. And I started creating content and it completely transformed my business. I got my life back. I didn't have to work weekends anymore. I didn't work nights. I stopped working on Fridays, you know, at, at 4.30. I'd try to always have my last appointment be around 4, 4.30 so I could be home by 6. And I started being able to see my kids again. And I didn't have to do things like cold calling or door knocking or open houses. I haven't done those for years and years because I have been creating video content. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. Most agents are constantly working weekends, working nights. We're exhausted, right? We get into business because we want financial freedom. We want time. Time just to realize that we have no financial freedom and no time. Did you know that the average agent only stays in business for five years? 87% of agents will leave the real estate business within five years because they're not treating their business like a business. They're not treating their business like an entrepreneur. They're treating their business like an agent. And unfortunately, they're taught to do things that quite frankly just don't work. We're taught from our brokers to do open houses and to do sphere of influence. But let's face it, those things are not the best use of our time. Yes, I get it, they can work, but you're marketing one-to-one. -one. When you market one to many and you create video content that will work for you, that people can binge watch you and they start to develop a relationship with you and they position you as the authority, do you know that you can be a brand new agent and this can work for you? Because perception is reality and when people perceive that you're busy, they perceive that you're doing business because you're talking about real estate, you're talking about your industry, you're talking about what's happening you know, in the market, you're talking about certain subdivisions. When you start talking about this kind of stuff, you become known as the expert.
And what happens is, is you start attracting business. People start calling you. And when you then can take that content and you can then think about what can I do that everyone else isn't doing? How can I position myself as this local professional, as a real estate agent or as a mortgage broker, completely different than my competitors? And when you figure that out, then that's where all the secret sauce comes. And that's the kind of thing that we're gonna be talking about on this channel. But more than anything else, I want you to understand that I don't care where you're at right now. If you're a brand new agent, this can work for you. Or maybe you're an agent who's doing like 20 deals a year, but you wanna get to 40, 50, or 60. This strategy can work. Or maybe you're a top producer like I was, who is just absolutely tired and you're sick of spending every weekend and every night and you don't have the systems and you're chasing your tail and you still wanna dominate, but you wanna do it in a more effective, efficient way, then these kind of things that I'm gonna talk about on this channel will absolutely work for you. So I'm just honored to be able to support you and help you and you know, I wanna hear from you. What do you want me to talk about? What do you need? What can help make your life better? And that's the whole idea behind what we're gonna be talking about on this on this channel. And you know, right now more than ever, you need to learn digital marketing. Like we know that COVID is hit and we're we've been forced to kind of work from from our homes and to work from the computer. People when they see someone knock on their door, they're running for the hills, right? Like what do you do when somebody calls you? You're hanging up the phone. So we need to learn to utilize digital marketing. And I know that some of you are thinking that now is the time, but I gotta tell you, it's been the time for a long time. You should have been doing digital marketing from way, way before COVID hit. And I've got some good news. I'm an expert digital marketer. We have sold over $35 million online in the past five years. This year, we've done about $54 million online in, in real estate sales, and I don't talk to a seller or a buyer ever. So the strategies that I'm gonna be teaching you are gonna show you how to do that. And um, you're gonna learn how to be able to utilize what I've learned and take it into your own business so that you can have the, the life that you deserve because you deserve it. You got into this industry because you want to spend more time with your family just to find that you don't have any. And I want to be able to show you how I've been able to get my life back and develop a really strong relationship with my husband, my new husband of 13 years and of with my daughters and my family. So I want this for you too. I hope you're gonna enjoy what you're seeing and I wanna hear from you. So thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I cannot wait just to add as much value to you as I can. Thanks so much for watching my video. You can learn more about how to be a successful real estate professional by watching other videos that I have. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, make it a great home selling and buying day.